Black Square is one of the truly mythical works in early 20th century art. It exerts a huge influence over the imagination of subsequent generation of artists as this hour zero in modern art. Until 1913, he had worked in lots of different styles. Throughout 1915, he began to make a new set of paintings for exhibition that was entirely abstract. And then finally he revealed this work in an exhibition and that exhibition was the last futurist exhibition 010 in St. Petersburg. In the original photograph you can see 20 paintings. 12 of these paintings can still be identified today and we hung them in a way that evokes the way that they were first shown in 1915. So yet all these paintings, very colourful, all the shapes, extremely dynamic. And then lo and behold, in the top corner of the room hung the black square. Some thought it was blasphemy because the top corner of the room usually is where you present Russian icons, something which um, Malevich Andorti was very well aware of. So it's almost as though he's saying this is the most um, iconic work in this exhibition and this will remain an iconic work as a work of art that shows you how much one work can change the course of art history. The Black Square holds this incredible power. Morse's late work has been discussed in relationship to the politics of the time and particularly the um, increasing clampdown of Stalin and of the Bolshevik regime on avant-garde art. But I think it would be very hard to see these faceless figures as a celebration of the peasant in the new Soviet regime. We've become so used to think that abstraction is an endpoint and that it is the, um, a symbol of progress and of modernity that we automatically associate figuration with being regressive. But I think the late work, by Levitt's late work, is more complex than that. It's not simply a U-turn, it's not um, repentant. He signs his latest work, his latest figurative works with a black square. It's as though he wants to say, now I'm painting this, but I was the inventor of the black square and I will not repent for, um, for this. He insists once again on this coexistence of different styles and different ideas about art. And I think that makes him a very pertinent figure to think about from today's point of view.